Good evening. Uh, welcome everybody to the first uh, school board meeting of 2019. Please rise and join us with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, I'm sorry, I've got the old, one second, a little discombobulated. Oh, no, thanks. Okay, so first on the agenda today, uh, are there any adjustments? So I would like to make an adjustment to item seven, consideration and action to approve the following 2018-29 uh, administrative and athletic extracurricular personnel nominations. Uh, there's three nominations, and um, it, one of them is a friend of ours, and I feel like it's appropriate to abstain and, and not be um, part of the voting process. So I'd like to separate um, the position of district mentor uh, for Katarina Aspinwall and assistant indoor track coach as 7A and then 7B being for the varsity head baseball coach. Okay, do we need a motion um, to second it? Yes. Yeah, right. Can I have a second? Um, second. Okay. All those in favor? Okay, thank you, Heather. Okay, I'm gonna go back. Okay, yeah, um, next is, uh, may I have a motion for number two, approval of the board minutes? I move we approve the regular business meeting minutes from Tuesday, December 11th, 2018. May I have a second? Second. Who's, I'm sorry, Elizabeth, was that you? Okay. I'll look at it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, next, we have comments from student representatives. Take this. Hi, um, so we haven't had a ton of school over the past month because we've been on vacation, um, but right now we're all just preparing for um, midterms, which are the week of Martin Luther King um, weekend, so everyone's getting ready for that, um, studying, we're doing a lot of reviewing in school, just in preparation for that, making sure everyone like fully understands all the material they've been taught this year so far. And teachers are giving us like review, are starting to give us like review packets and um, ways to help a study. Yes. So there's not a ton going on. Yeah, I don't right think now, we have much else to say. Everything's been like pretty smooth and stuff like that. So not any huge issues. Um, I've heard a lot of kids are very happy about all the lunch things coming back and the proportion sizes being back. So the bagels. Yeah. yeah, the bagels are good. <laughs> They've got a modest bagels now, which is exciting. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's all we have. Thank you. Happy New Year. <laughs> Good luck on the exams. Thank you. Uh, moving along, we have um, any comments from the public on agenda items? Do you mind just saying your name and your address just for record? Um, my name's Janet Biliotti. I live at 7 Montgomery Terrace here in Cape. Um, I just had a question about the budget um, goals, which are an agenda item tonight. And I know there's lots of steps in the budget process, but I just wanted to ask the question early on in the process. And I wondered, as we're all learning more and more about it, and we're, you guys are doing such a great job of really publicizing where we are, um, I wondered, is the budget process ever started with the assumption of a zero subsidy from the state? Like, where is the starting point for the, as we start to look at numbers and goals and what departments are asking for? Like, do you ever do a, a process where you assume zero and then build from there? Or is it the starting point um, what the previous year's numbers were? So maybe that's more of a logistical question and not technically related to tonight's agenda item, but I just wasn't exactly sure where to ask that. So 
I just wondered if, if you guys had any information that you'd be willing to share or if it would be addressed a little further down the line, that would be just really helpful just to sort of know how that gets started. Sure. That's all. Um, so when we look at the budget, we look at two things. Um, we have an expenditure budget and we also look at the revenue side. And the revenue side, um, the subsidy would be on the revenue side and any other revenues that come in. So right now we're just working with the expenditure budget. Okay. When do you get to the other part? Um, we're supposed to get our subsidy on uh, by February 1st. Okay. So hopefully we'll have some more information. Okay. So the revenue side isn't really addressed in the process until then, once you have, okay. Uh, correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other public comments, questions? Yep. Okay. We're moving on to item five, administrative reports, beginning with principals. So let's start with um, elementary, Jason. Hi, good evening. It's good to see everyone again after the holiday break. Uh, I have a few things to share tonight with you. Um, I just, I want to start with um, a few um, highlights regarding our students. And so, as you know, it's not uncommon for Pond Cove students to demonstrate um, leadership qualities and to, and to reach out and support the greater community. Um, I've often reported um, some, of these, um, some of these things to you folks, and I have one tonight, a couple tonight that I'm really proud of. Um, first, um, one of our fourth graders uh, who actually has um, has been the catalyst for some fundraisers in the past, uh, sent me a proposal shortly before the holiday vacation um, it, to initiate a toy drive. Um, and so working with her parents, she provided a proposal to me and we met and, and we actually held the toy drive and um, we were able to donate a, um, very large box of toys to Opportunity Alliance in South Portland. And so I'm very proud of Regan and her family for uh, coordinating the toy drive and making that happen. Uh, so I'm just, I continue to be amazed at, at how our students um, just time and time again step up and um, they, they do their homework, they do their research and they, they find very important causes and, and work to support them. So we're proud of her. Uh, something else I wanted to tell you about was uh, our, one of our fourth grade classes, Mrs. McGinnis's class, uh, has been declared a second place winner in a writing contest. It's a 10th annual Be a Famous Writer contest. It's something that you can look up online to learn more about, so Be a Famous Writer. And so there are entries from all across the country. The classes write these stories together. There's like, there's Mrs. McGinnis did this last year and, and she's very pleased today to be a second place winner. And so there's a process that she goes through where the students brainstorm together and they independently write sections of the story and work on it and revise it and edit it and put it all together. Uh, and it's really quite a, an amazing story and so they won second place. So that's great. So congratulations Mrs. McGinnis's class. I just also finally just wanted to um, share with you uh, our plans for the next two early release Wednesday, PD Wednesdays. So this year we are, one of the things we're focusing on at Pond Cove is um, improving um, our skills in administer, not only administering the NWEA, which is an assessment that um, we use in the district to measure um, students' um, current level of performance. And at Pond Cove, uh, students in grade one through four take the assessment in reading and math three times a year, fall, winter, and spring. Next week, we'll be taking the winter, um, winter assessment. And we, we really want to make sure that the information that we gather is valid data. And the NWEA is taken on a device, taken on an iPad, which can uh, 
pose some challenges for very young students. So we work really hard to make sure that that using a device is not a barrier for the students to show us what they know. So we are tomorrow at the January 9th early release day, we, are, we have a team of staff training teachers, refreshing them on the administration procedures, making sure that students receive all the support they need to answer the questions accurately and confidently using the device. And then we'll be testing for about a week. And then on the January 23rd early release day, we're going to be doing a workshop on analyzing reports and data from that NWA assessment. So we'll be doing training around that. But the staff will have fresh live data that they just received from the NWA a week before. And, um, They'll be actually learning how to interpret a few very important reports and using the data to start to plan instruction for the next day. So we're pretty excited about that. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Sounds like a good Thank plan. You. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Mr. Eastman. I don't know if I'm supposed to wait to be called or just come up, so I just came up. Um, so there's a few things. It does feel like not a lot's happened lately, so, um, but I think it's because of the holiday break. And So a couple of important things have gone on. Howard started last year having um, us survey our staff for just general input and feeling, and last year I did it a little later in the year, so this year we did it before break, um, and, it, and it's been really helpful. Um, we kind of asked just two questions, pros and cons of current schedule, because if you've ever lived in a middle school, you know every year it changes and everybody's always up in arms over it. So we're trying to do that earlier. Um, so just simply pros and cons, uh, and then job satisfaction. Like what makes it this a great place to work and what could make it a better place to work? Uh, so just those simple two questions, we have about 87% of the staff reply uh, to that, which I think is awesome, and it's overwhelmingly positive, but I think the general consensus is, let's just keep going with what we have because it feels really good. Uh, and we'll try to tweak a little here and there, but not, not change a whole bunch of things for next year. So, so that's kind of rewarding for us to get that feedback um, because it validates what we had hoped would happen and how, and how it's been going. So that was good. Um, our, that kind of feeds into the goal of trying to get our schedules completed uh, before the close of the year, which would be amazing for us. It's usually well into the summer and almost Seems like before school starts, before that happens. Uh, another goal that kind of goes with that is to focus on the transitions from eighth grade to ninth grade. I know we're having a meeting maybe tomorrow, but if not, it's next week, um, between some high school uh, department heads and the middle school department heads and trying to figure that out of where we're at and how we can make that a little smoother. Um, and Jason just met today with Mr. Warren and myself. We're gonna start working on the fourth to fifth grade transition uh, much earlier. So those are a couple things that we've been working on. Um, I can't say how happy we are to have Katrina Aspinwall with us. It's been, a, it was a big gap in our, in our year to kind of try to cover and pull people and support those kids. And she's just comes in and, and has fit right in. So that's been, that's been really nice. Um, it's also sometimes I think goes unnoticed, but we come back from break, our school has kind of got a deep cleaning <laughs> that it kind of needed. Uh, the fifth grade wing got all new wax and you know we were, weren't allowed to go in the hallways, but to know that those people are there working really hard while we're all kind of vacated the building, I think is something to remember and be thankful for. Um, the gym floor was all re-varnished and it looks kind of like August again, you know, when you first walk into that building. Um, much like Jason, we did NWEAs today and that really could not happen without a lot of effort. Uh, to have 525 kids taking online assessment at the same time and not have it crash and you know and have all the things go really you know Jack Duffy did awesome at the tech support side of all that and making sure it was ready to go and then Jay Kogovic and Laura Ellis our, our uh, um, interventionists really did all the logistical planning so they were walking around with, I told them wear sneakers today uh, and they did because they always are getting called so that was that was really nice and then lastly um, one of the goal, another goal that we had last year in, in hiring the social worker was getting some support with tardies, attendance, tr truancy, all of those things. Uh, we've been meeting about once a month in the beginning, and now it's kind of gone down to, to a couple times a month, and you're starting to see a reduction in the kids that were, were coming to school either late or 
just missing days. Um, so and I think a part of that is to really make sure we understand the difference between truant and just daily attendance. So daily attendance, if you're not in school, you're not in school, whether it's excused or not. Truant is unexcused, but uh, so having that support and it's really not, she's not really doing the tracking of it. She's helping to do the intervention of, hey, what's going on and why, how can we help and what can we do differently? So, so those relationships I think are, are starting to really be strong. Um, and other than that, tomorrow's PD, we're just working on uh, English language arts and math focus for tomorrow's early release. Any questions? Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you, Troy. Mr. Shen. So um, I just try to think if there are any junior parents here. I don't think so. Parents? Think they, what? J junior parents? Junior parents? Okay. This is it. Okay. So I just sent an email out to all juniors and junior parents, and this is what I wanted to mention to you. Um, a couple months ago, I don't remember when it was, at a workshop, I believe, um, all the principals talked about um, MEA results, the testing results, and in the high school's case, SAT results. Um, and one of the things I talked to you about is that we were going to begin second semester with some, some, some initiatives to try to prepare students um, better than we have done in the past, um, which has really been very little. Um, but since the SAT has changed, I'm not going to review my, my whole spiel the last time I talked to you about SATs. Um, I think the, the test has gotten more complicated. Um, and, and even better to be able to go into the SAT for the first time, being familiar with the types of questions, having a sense of this is how I'm going to attack this type of question, being given some options that other students have found were successful and that sort of thing. So I just sent out, so um, Joe Wagner is the Achievement Center coordinator and he's been doing a lot of work for the last few weeks to get up to speed on SAT, both in math and English and everything in between. Um, so he and I are going to be meeting with the entire junior class on Thursday during the achievement period to sort of unveil that initiative. So all juniors are just notified of that. In addition, so there will be a certain number of sessions, I think it's eight, um, a certain number of sessions that we'll expect all juniors to attend. They won't be losing any class time, it'll be built around their free periods and study hall periods. Um, and it won't be by any means every class period. It's, um, it's about eight sessions between now and mid-April. Um, and then for students who we think need particular support because of their performance on the PSAT, we're going to be offering that as well through the Achievement Center. I mean, anybody can come to the Achievement Center to get some support for it, um, above and beyond what Mr. Wagner provides, but we're excited to be um, starting this and seeing if it can help, help some kids out. I expect, I expect there will be some grousing from kids because many times they understandably like to be in control of their own time, uh, but we're going to be able um, on Thursday to let every student know exactly when these meetings will be for their particular group so that they can hopefully plan around that and be accepting of this as a really good opportunity for them. So that's what I want to report. That's great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Jeff, while you're up there, do you want to talk about the um, program of studies? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so you all have the voluminous program of studies. It seems to get longer and longer each year. There are actually not a tremendous number of changes, but I wanted to just point out a few um, as the board gets time between now and the next time you convene to hopefully give formal blessing to the program of studies. I wanted to point out a, few, a couple of things. First of all, um, if you have your program available, um, on page seven. It's in your packet. I'll wait a moment. Is everybody on page seven who has? Okay, so on page seven, um, you'll see there's a line that begins grades and eligibility. Um, it's the sentence just before that line that is the new sentence in there. And so let me give you a tiny bit of background about that. Um, we have not, 
um, for many, many, many years reported student class rank by GPA. What we do is, and colleges report to us, they appreciate the way that we do this, is that we report um, um, how students are doing by decile bands. So we'll report the top 10% and the next next 10% and then the next 20. So there's a series of decile bands that we report. And we report both unweighted and weighted GPA. So historically, um, as you will see from the sentence just before the one that I pointed out to you, historically, the weighting that was given to honors classes um, was 1.3, which means, which which is a big, big, so it means that if you have a, if you get an 80 in a class and you're, it's an honors class, then there's a weighting which would bring that 80 up to 104, I believe. Um, then there's a one point, has historically been a <laughs> 1.35 weighting for AP classes. Um, and this is nothing new, it's been in existence sometime longer than I've been here anyway. This was in place well before I came. So after um, um, a number of discussions about this, we've decided that that's more than is necessary. Um, and we are suggesting bringing this down to 1.05 and 1.1, and that is the sentence that you'll see there. Um, so that's what that's, that's what that's all about. Is, and now, because this would be changed effective with the students who come in as ninth graders next year because um, it's not really fair in the middle of the, in, in the by, <laughs> changing the rules in the middle of the game is not really fair so it's just sort of letting kids know that that's what we plan to do um, subject to your approval of the program studies um, um, starting with next year's ninth grade class so the other thing that I will point out is, and this is in a number of places, but there is some change to the approach in English, science, and social studies in being a little bit more prescriptive about course placement recommendations for students for the following year. Um, and you'll see those are spelled out in the program of studies as well, but I wanted to point those out to you. Um, it's, you'll find it at the beginning of each page of English, science, and social studies. The reason for that is that we have come to believe that while we want to be as flexible as possible in allowing lots of movement, and this will not, and we will continue to have lots of movement of kids from one level to the next, and we want kids to be able to challenge themselves. We also sense that there are sometimes the challenge, kids are challenging themselves in a way that is not best for them and is really designed to, um, and, and it, puts you, it, it puts them in a place where, which is not the best fit for them. Um, and there's oftentimes, not always, but sometimes doing it for the wrong reasons. In other words, not about the educational benefit of it, but about probably the grade weighting of it more than anything else. Um, so we want to get a little bit better handle on that. Um, and we believe that the effect of it will be actually be to increase the rigor at all levels of the classes that we offer. Um, and the level of achievement and the, the fit for students. So that's the second one. There's only one new course, I believe, in the program of studies, um, and it's on page 47. Um, it is sociology, um, which will be an, another elective offering in the social studies department. So again, that's on page 47. I believe, other than that. So I'm sorry, Jeff, did you say it was just the sociology class is the new one? Yep, it's right. a new class. Yep, yep. I, I'm pretty sure that all the rest of the classes are, you'll see there, there's been a couple of title changes um, to a couple of the classes, but they're the same classes and they're just a wording change. Um, but other than that, I think, I think you'll find it to be a very familiar document. Oh. And I will say this as well, and the superintendent and I were talking about this. So we are facing a crunch this year about putting a master schedule together. So my hope would be that we could begin the process of course selection um, 
and then if there are any major wrenches that the board, any changes that the board wishes to put in, the master schedule will still be months away from actually being created and we could adjust to any concerns or changes that the board mentions next year. Um, but there are, um, we, we're, we have some staffing issues that are, we're gonna be really squeezed more than we normally are um, around master schedule creation time. We're still hoping to be able to begin this process as soon as possible. But by this time, February, there will still be lots of steps that we still have to do and we, I assure you that we can, we can change ship if we need to change ship. Does that, is that okay? When do you hope students will start signing up? So shortly after the semester break, Susanna. Okay, so okay. A, couple, a week or so. Yep, yep. Okay. yep. Right. a couple of weeks from now. Yep. So right, sort of, I think it's scheduled to be sort of the week or two right after midterm, so okay. it's, which is just around when the board begins to begin, has its next business meeting. Yep. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Good evening. Hello. I am um, one of the one of my jobs or one of my roles as the special services director is to keep the board up to date as far as news coming out of Augusta and potential changes, particularly if those changes result in budgetary items. So one of the pieces that I learned just today. Um, is that a group of representatives from DO, I'm gonna name off some, <laughs> uh, Department of Education, MADSAC, which is the uh, group that represents the special education uh, uh, administrators across the state, the MPA, the MSAA, the MSBA, and CDS, which is Child Development Services, have met and are proposing a bill to transition CDS to public school. Um, they, they feel that this move will will have to happen given the rate that CDS is losing staff and felt that it's better to be proactive in this endeavor. The idea is for public schools to take over the responsibility of 50% of four-year-olds residing in the district next year, 75% the following year, and 100% the year after that, and then 50% of the three-year-olds starting in 2022-2023 and all three-year-olds by 2023 to 2024 school year. And I wanted to mention this because there's a lot of pieces that go along with this uh, as far as staffing, uh, space to service these students, and all, all of the issues. And we kind of, we talked a little bit about this when uh, John was going up to represent the board, and that was one of the pieces that was on the table. Um, and if do you have any questions about that? I don't have a whole lot of answers at this time. No, um, I just wrote there... down space, staff, and funding, and then you said space, staff, <laughs> and funding. So I was just... is, well, is it possible if you can email that to us or to somebody so we can? I want to see that in writing. I'm sorry. Did, were you reading an email or were you reading some facts? I was of... pulling it from the email, and it, uh, the directors in Cumberland County, uh, we share everything together and we have representatives that go to certain meetings at the state level and they bring it back to the rest of us because and that's okay. that's where it's coming from yeah. and also i was just asking if you could share it with the board that what you were reading from oh, sure so absolutely yeah thank you did, um, did they say anything about funding <laughs> well they did talk about that it would be a separate funding stream oh but of course my question would be how would that be calculated is it going to be calculated using the same are EPS we formula? Run it through EPS. And will we end up in the same place we are right now um, with very little state allocation? I don't, I'm, I don't have any idea. But, um, hmm. It is supposed to be separate and aside from the current EPS formula that's being used, but there's, you know, there's a lot of variables in there. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is I want to, uh, thanks to the flexibility of the building administrators during the December 19th early release, I was able to meet with the entire special education staff. This was hugely successful as I was able to gain significant amount of feedback with regard to programming needs across the district. And so I just want to thank Jeff and Troy and Jason 
for being flexible and allowing me access to that. Um, currently, we are servicing 162 students in special ed. Upon Cove, we have 60. Both at middle school and high school, we have 51 each. We have 15 students in referral and two students that are outplaced. And thank you. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Dan. Hello, Happy New Year, everyone. A um, couple of things to look forward to in January. I'll start with the fact that we have two professional development Wednesdays, one on January 9th and one on January 23rd. Uh, Jason talked already about um, what's going to be happening at Pond Cove. I'll give you a little more information about the middle school and then talk about the high school. Um, so this Wednesday, um, as Troy mentioned, um, you know, the middle school teachers teach two content areas, so we can only work on two content areas at a time. So on Wednesday, they'll be focusing on ELA and math. And Kelly Smith, who is the um, literacy consultant we've been working with for, uh, this is our second year now, um, is gonna be working with the fifth and sixth grade teachers for the day, and then continue into the afternoon. And what she typically does is she'll go into a classroom, and either she'll model a lesson, or the teacher will model a lesson, and the other um, grade level teachers are released to watch and then afterwards they debrief and it's just very effective professional development so we feel fortunate to have the time um, to work with her on this and again appreciate the school board support um, and then the um, seventh through twelfth grade English teachers are going to be working together for the full two hours um, and again that's the fact that they can have that cross-building collaboration as made possible possible by the professional development Wednesdays and the planning for that has been done by the middle school ELA content leader and the high school English department chair so um, so we're excited about that and then um, the uh, middle school math teachers under the leadership of the math content leader are going to be doing two things. One, they're going to be looking at their learning targets. As they um, have been reporting to learning targets this year, they're finding that they have way too many. Um, and so they're going to be consolidating those, which is good. And they're also going to be looking at student responses to the practice MEA questions that they've been giving. Um, and so we can put all that student work on the table and um, talk about what the students' strengths and weaknesses are. Um, and then on the January 23rd, um, oh wait, and then the high school's gonna be doing department work on January 9th, and then on January 23rd, it'll be for the middle school, a uh, science social studies day, and they're gonna be working um, middle school, high school. Um, again, planned by the, the respective content leaders. So that's happening in January, and then we're also starting the um, third round, um, the third offering of our combined Cape Elizabeth USM graduate course in proficiency-based education practices. So we will have, um, that course starts on January 22nd, and it's held right here in Cape Elizabeth, and, um, and when that course is finished, we will have um, had approximately 30 people go through um, that course, and it's, um, been very effective. Again, I think that the teachers who've taken it have spoken really positively about what they've taken away from it. We have common vocabulary, common practices. Um, it focuses primarily on backwards design, so identifying those learning goals for students and then thinking about the assessments that will measure where they are in their learning and then the instruction to um, get them to meet those learning targets. And then finally, and this may be in Donna's report, so I may be jumping the gun here a little bit, but um, you may know that the state has released um, draft report cards now. Okay, so the state um, at the end of December, um, you remember back in the day, they the state would um, issue these report cards and we were all given letter grades and nobody liked that very much or thought it was in any way helpful. Um, so that's been completely revamped, um, I think, um, compared to what we had before, the new format is much, much better and, and should give us some, some really helpful data. data. So anyway, these, uh, all of the school districts received drafts of that. And just today I got the data set that's underlying um, the, um, yes, <laughs> um, I just got the data set that's underlying the, um, um, I don't want to say the grades, but well, they told us where we were and now I know why they told us where we 
uh, what, where we are, why, why we are where we are. But in any case, they have also just told us that they're going to delay the public release. So I think we're waiting to see when that happens and then we'll be able to give you more information um, on that. So. I'm not sure if that was in any way coherent, <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm happy to answer a question or two, or or I can just go sit down and so the state try again next card, month. You can't give us any indication right now, one way or the other. No. Wait and see. <laughs> so you're just leaving it's us hanging. The, the yeah. bottom line there was wait and see. Yeah, but I did want, in case you had heard okay. that, um, yeah. Yeah. thank you that they had been released. I wanted you to know. So you can had. share about the no emerging. Oh, yeah, I can share that. Why not? Yeah. Um, so there are a variety of um, measures. So there's academic progress, academic achievement, chronic absenteeism, uh, graduation rate. So, and we're, we're being measured. And we're, we're given a, a grade um, of uh, emerging, developing, meeting, and excelling. And we didn't have any emergings. <laughs> we didn't have any excellings either, but um, <laughs> but we didn't have any emergings. Rates? And I'm sorry, even with graduation rates. Yes, huh. and I just found out why. But I'm going to save that. Are we gonna I want you to come back. I, I We're going to come, come back. I'm building Don't a theory worry. on that. Okay, but I will I will tell you that you know. Um, I looked at how other districts were doing, and and. Um, and, uh, and we look good. We look good. So, okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Kathy. I'm going to do a Troy and just come up before you call me. I figured it makes it faster. You haven't called anyone. <laughs> So the first thing I wanted to go over just to let you guys know that the check register that I need the board to sign, uh, we do do them re weekly, but we were has, having you sign them once a month. Well, I talked to the auditor and I talked to the superintendent. What we're going to do now is um, have the chair of the school board sign it and the chair of the finance department and also the superintendent will be signing it. And the auditor is fine with that. As long as we're consistent all the time, you two, you are all primary people, so it's going to make it a lot quicker. I don't have to hover all over all of you guys going, sign it, come on, sign it, so um, that we felt that it was a more efficient um, way to do it. So I just want to let you guys know that the people who aren't chairs don't have to worry about signing it anymore. <laughs> so that's a good thing. On to our uh, finances. Our uh, financial statements as of uh, January 2nd, we are in good shape. Donna and I met last week, and we are technically halfway through the fiscal year. So if you looked at our budget, the, I have a little sticky stuck on mine, but the front page, which is um, this cover sheet, is based on state statute. And if you look at the bottom of that, our percentage spent to date is 47.9. So we are, we're in good shape. Um, and um, I just want to let you guys know that Don and I are looking at things closely. I approve all purchases and um, we're doing, we're doing good. Nothing great, mind you, but we're doing good. So I wanted to let you guys know that. Any questions for me or anything? Or do you want me to go over anything else? No? We're good? Okay. I love this. This is nice and short. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> so I have begun um, meeting with administrators to discuss their proposed budget. So I think I've met with four administrators so far. And we sit down and we go through. Uh, they have prepared uh, a budget for their section or department. Um, and turned it into Catherine, and then she prints it out um, much in the form that um, we get our budget breakdowns every month, uh, line by line. So we have gone over line by line of each of those um, four budgets so far. Uh, she compiles them all and talked about um, staffing, um, what's what student enrollment, uh, what what's needed for staffing. Um, this is, uh, I always call it a um, original request budget because we've asked the administrators to put in what they feel they need to run their programs. 
um, and we'll, we'll go from there. Um, but we do go line by line through the budget, look at supplies, look at equipment, um, look at every, every line in their budget, um, talk about the money in there, what it will go for, uh, what their plans are. Uh, so we spend um, almost, it's been about two hours with every administrator going over, and this is their expenditure budget, um, just l really line by line examining. Um, we've made some changes and we will uh, continue to make some changes, but this is our first uh, go round um, with that. So I do that. Um, so I'm clear about what's in the budget and so that they're clear about what, what is in their budget, really a chance to closely examine um, what they're planning. Uh, so in your packet, you, uh, in your packet you have some budget documents and we're starting to um, provide those for you. And the first document that you have is a big colorful pie chart. And it, really, it just talks about, and this is from the FY19 budget, so it's from last year, um, just gives you a reminder of where the, uh, the funding goes. And um, this is the expenditure budget. And really when you look at salaries and benefits, it's 85% of the budget. Um, and those are um, agreed upon in the negotiated agreement. Uh, five percent uh, of the budget is facilities and maintenance, and the remaining ten percent is divided into school supplies, equipment, debt service, and staff development. So um, there is not a lot of wiggle room in the budget. And these documents will all be provided on the website uh, for people to, at home to look at. The next document shows a picture of um, a picture, a graph of uh, state subsidy, the general purpose aid to education. So um, this is this is our state subsidy, our ED 279. This is last year's. Oh, this is a history um, of what we have received in the past. And again, we won't. We're hoping that by February 1st we will receive our ED 279. Um, by law, they're supposed to have it provided to us by then. But you will see that um, we had our big spike in 2015-16, FY16, and it's continued to drop steadily um, through, through last year. And I'm not expecting um, any increases this year, so. Uh, I would I would expect it's based on subsidy is based based on valuation and enrollment. If um, enrollment, the best possibility is if valuation goes down and enrollment goes up, and we have just the opposite going on right now. Our valuation is up and our enrollment is down a bit. Um, so we'll see what happens on February 1st. But um, this would be part of our uh, revenue. The next sheet is the student enrollment based on October 1st data. So this um, goes back to uh, FY 2000. And you do see that the enrollment has continued to drop. I was just going to note that um, when I was going through my packet at home, I made a delineation around when cross, the Cross Hill development opened because it's a huge uh, housing development and it, it coincides with the enrollment spike. With the spike in enrollment, yeah. interesting, yeah. And I think people kind of forget, why do we have that enrollment spike and why, and, and that's, I don't think that it's coincidental. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the last time we had a major development. Great. And then the last chart is um, enrollment compared to professional staffing levels. So you will see um, a red line and that is enrollment. And that is from FY um, 2001. And uh, the blue line is professional staff. Uh, so professional staff has um, gone up a bit um, and enrollment has gone down. There are many reasons for um, increased staffing, including uh, mandates. And if you read my Cape Courier article that's coming out next week, <laughs> I talk a lot, Dell and I worked a lot on um, um, positions that are required in order to support our special education students, plus we have um, other um, 
mandates that have come out, such as uh, ELL for our uh, students who don't, who don't have uh, English as their, their first language, RTI, which is our support, our pre-referral uh, support system for students, uh, the Gifted and Talented program, and the list goes on and on um, of um, requirements, mandates that we have received from state and federal uh, governments, and we have to have staffing for those, so. Um. Do we have um, thoughts of why enrollment goes down in the district? Do we have, uh, I mean, I, I think it's very understandable why the staffing is going up. The mandates make that a reasoning. Um, are there theories or is there an understanding of why our enrollment is declining? Well, I think for there are some people? theories. Um, aging population, mm -hmm. uh, limited housing uh, mm -hmm. for people who wish to live in Cape Elizabeth and mm -hmm. either can't afford the housing or can't find the housing. So limited yep. housing, uh, housing market available. So um, I think um, and we've, we've thrown out a lot of theories. I don't think we have proof of anything, but these are the conditions, the, our current realities. Yeah, and I think part of why I'm bringing this up as well is to talk about the meeting that's happening tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. The needs assessment is um, there, I have heard, and obviously this isn't proof, but this is just informal conversations with people in the area that have had um, opportunities to uh, well, comparing, not opportunities, comparing with other districts nearby that have schools that physically are in better condition. And so when they come professionally to look at the different districts, um, people are making choices to be elsewhere uh, because of the state of our schools. So I am a firm believer that the, the um, aging population, the housing is probably part of it as well, but the condition, the physical conditions of our buildings are not appealing to attract new families coming into the town. And I'm not trying to put you on the spot, Piper, but she's sitting there like shaking her head yes. So, I mean. The, like, the, like the new building, I don't, is it Falmouth or Yarmouth? One of them, I think it's oh, no, there's new Falmouth. Yeah, Falmouth. Nice. Falmouth. New Yarmouth is. Yeah, Falmouth's got like, it looks like a five-star hotel. Like, <laughs> yeah. I guess. <laughs> but, I mean, our school like does the job. It's just not very aesthetically pleasing. Right. But, like, it does it, so. But I, but I believe that it's complicated and it yeah, does make a difference and it's not an easy fix, but. Yeah, it's definitely um, tough to completely redo the school, I can imagine, but I mean, it works fine, but I can see definitely like new parents wanting to come in and it doesn't exactly look amazing, but the education that you get from it is still really good. <laughs> So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up in relationship to de declining yeah. enrollment. That could be a part of it. To your point, Heather, um, and to yours also, I mean, I can convince my relatives to move over here by snap, but anyone who's a stranger and they compare Farmouth and us in Scarborough, they gonna, they do not know any better and they're gonna choose aesthetics over yeah. education. So just remember that. Uh, so just to remind people, today we have had two snow days, and I'd like to thank um, Bob Malley and the Public Works uh, Department and crews for working so hard to clear our roads so that we can have uh, late starts instead of missing school. So we've had a, a couple of those. So thanks, thanks everyone out there that, that's working so hard in the morning to get our, our roads cleared. You do have an enrollment sheet. Um, as of January 1st, 2019, and um, we have remained steady, exactly steady from last month. So. Right. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to new business. We have um, item six, which is the school budget goals for FY20. Um, do we have that laid out? Do you wanna address that? So usually um, I ask the school board to uh, to come up with a goal or two to guide us as we work through the budget process. Um, what is it that you um, feel is important for this budget process? That might be the lenses through which we look at the budget. Um, you have to make some hard decisions. And so what is it that you use to make those decisions? What, what do you think about? Um, 
I always like to quote those goals throughout the budget process and the documents that I put out to remind us um, what we're trying to do with the budget, so. Okay, so you're just asking for a discussion I am. right now. Okay. <laughs> um, Thoughts on goals, goal or goals? Yeah, I'm just trying to think about like a succinct way of putting the things that are in my head. But um, so for me, just sort of speaking off the cuff because it's not going to be succinct. Um, ju you know, as as you're making as you're in your meetings and making decisions, and um, it, you know, I, I feel like we're we're constantly moving in this direction. Um, what is what is best for the students, um, but sort of like what Jeff was saying in terms of um, the, changing the, the AP course, the weights of the AP credit, credit and then reducing, um, or not reducing, but also um, shifting, uh, making sure the fit is proper with the student, like not ma making sure that they're not just grabbing the AP course because they think they have to, but is it the right fit? Um, so always thinking what is best for the student first versus uh, keeping up with the Joneses, keeping up with the, you know, the rest of the country. We have to do that, I know, but um, I do think we do a pretty darn good job of putting the children first um, right off the bat. And then from there, I would say, um, you know, it, the, the zero-based, you know, the zero-based budgeting, like building the budget from from zero, is it, it's in some ways that is the way to begin, um, but not necessarily essential. I mean, you take you, you go line by line. I think that's basically um, to me zero-based budgeting, and you decide, you know, is it is it working? There must be some kind of uh, measurement on some kind of scale on like how successful each line item is, um, if that makes sense. Like a, 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 you know, some sort of way of quantifying its worthiness of being included. Um, Elizabeth, I think, and you'll have to keep wordsmithing, but. Um, my thought is that one goal should be um, something like um, maintaining improve and improving the quality, high quality of education for every student in the district. And just kind of simple. Mm -hmm. That we're looking at high quality education and not, you know, each student as an individual and the whole group at the same time. I had something similar, really similar to what you said, succinct as well, just keeping a high academic standards top of mind, but coupling that with keeping the well-being of the student top of mind as well. So having both there as criteria when looking at budget. Heather? Um, I agree with that, and I think ultimately that is the most important, you know, thinking about the students. But um, I really liked what you had mentioned in um, in your superintendent report when you explained very clearly and very succinctly that you have met with four of the administrators, you spent two hours with each of them, you've gone line item by line item. I, it, I think that builds confidence that you, and you said so that I am very clear about what's in the budget, and so the um, administrators know exactly what they're putting in the budget. Um, and I think, um, I, I don't know how to work this as a goal, but I, I think keeping that message going across and that goal of um, very detailed watching and attentiveness to the details um, and communicating um, over and over again that you are paying attention to every nook and cranny, every line item, every piece of the budget and uh, reminding us, reminding the public, bringing that up over and over again and keeping that in the forefront of your mind that every every aspect of the budget is up for review. Mm -hmm. Deeply scrutinized. And deeply scrutinized, yeah. Nasser? Uh, yeah, so the graph that I had the student enrollment and the teachers or the staff and the article that you're going to write, um, 
I'm very, very happy. I, wrote the, I read the description for sociology class, and it touches today's topic. So uh, it's an excellent class. So you constantly do these classes, but at the same time, we ask uh, Mr. Shah to provide more support for the SATs to the students. So that's taking more time from the staff as well. I would also like to reiterate uh, to, to all of us, particularly Mr. Shedd, is that it's very, very stressful, extremely stressful for certain students, if not students, for college exception. So when you said um, keeping up with, with Jones, I guess that's it. So keeping up, yeah, so that is, that is a reality from the students. And therefore, it's causing stress, anxiety, and uh, so I think uh, the school should pay attention to that as well, and particularly those students who have such issues as well. And teaching them from early on that every student is individual and you cannot keep up with the, with the Joneses. something just sure. to go off what you were saying about the SATs and I want to applaud Mr. Shedd for um, creating an opportunity for all students to really get prepared for the SATs because I know like as they're coming around it's been a lot of stress for juniors thinking about how real college is becoming and stuff like that and I think having an essay time to work on SATs within school is extremely important considering um, the expense a lot of times for these SAT prep courses which can raise like anywhere from like 60 to $120 an hour just to like get like the practice in and like I know Khan Academy has really helped with that but I think it's really important that like we continue throughout the years providing time in school with teachers pre uh, preparing for those tests because they're pretty important to colleges um, and stuff like that. Yeah. And they're becoming more difficult. Yes, <laughs> they keep on getting more difficult every year. Um, I'd like to commend you, Donna. I think this is a great idea to have a few uh, very specific goals um, for us to be thinking about and to keep reminding us throughout the process. So I, I like this. I just wanted to give you some feedback on that. I think this is great. Thank you for bringing it to the process. I don't, I don't know how much help we're giving you, yeah. Yeah. but it, it makes me think of the, the book by Marie Kondo, the, you know, the, the Art of Tidying Up, or I forget yes. what it's called, which I didn't get too mm -hmm. far in. But... Um, <laughs> Basically, you look at every item and they're like, does this bring me joy yes. or does it not? And if it brings you joy, you keep it. And if it doesn't, or even if it sometimes brings me joy, but not all the time, you chuck it. Mm -hmm. So you can't be that ruthless, but something along those lines, you know, I know that's what you're looking for from us, and it's obviously not that simple, but I, I, I agree with Heather. I love this, this process. I appreciate that opportunity, yeah. and I think... I think we've come up with two. I think we've got a communication around, no, I think we have confidence in your scrutiny and care with the budget as well as the administrators, but I think Heather's comment around continual reminder and communication about all these steps that are being taken is really a, is a goal and a reminder to all of us and to you to keep communicating about that. And then the other goal, I. It, seems to strike a chord with most, if not all of us, was around, you know, um, keeping an eye to that high quality education for each student and as well as their well-being. I said well-being, yep. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I feel like as I hear from the board that we've at least settled on Two ideas. <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing yet, but we've got ideas. I'm hearing fiscally responsible and all the attention to yeah. detail and mm -hmm. that too. And I think that's important to say that out loud that we we want to be fiscally responsible to yes. to the citizens. Right. Yes. Yeah. And clear communication on that. Mm -hmm. the, the constantly. Mm -hmm. and great. But, but also like th that we are not afraid to apply you know a measurement of the success or lack of success of of a program or, you know, or buy into some, something, you know, that we're not going to necessarily keep something going just because it's always been. Right. I will try to write this up into something, <laughs> get Sorry. it out to you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item 7A. May I have a motion, please? 
the 7A, we're breaking down. Do it like, who's supposed to make the motion? How do they have Do it wrong. Well, I'm asking that somebody makes a motion for 7A, so 7A would be the first to. Um, I move. We approve the following 2018 2019 administrative and athletic extracurricular personnel nominations for as Lisa Leonard for district mentor for Katrina Aspinwall and Anne Marie Dion for assistant indoor track coach. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. And then um, item, I'm labeling it 7B. May I have a motion for the next one? Elizabeth, do you mind making a motion? I don't. Um, I move that we approve Glenn Reeves as the varsity head baseball coach at Cape Elizabeth High School. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. No, sir. Any discussion? All those in favor? Sorry. You're not saying. Uh, do I have to formally say that? Uh, yeah. In yeah. discussion? Okay. No. no. No, in the vote. Okay. She'll call for all those in favor. All those in favor? All those abstaining? <laughs> Thank you. I just want to bring up, I'm sorry, I didn't, um, I was told that there was a new tradition for how we make motions at the last meeting, so I didn't. We did, and I forgot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that what you meant when you were asking that question? Yes. Okay, I totally forgot. So, okay. I was trying to be a rule follower yeah. since I broke them all last Thank time. You. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, moving on to um, item eight. We have, um, Elizabeth, if you want to talk about it, there's no vote required, but. Right. Consideration to um, so at our last meeting uh, we we barely touched on um, relations with booster groups. That's why I wanted to bring that up to uh, with Donna. I I know Jeff um, Thorek was there, and did we even talk about it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I do remember him saying that he suggested would, using the main school management right, policy. Right, and it was like he had, I did, yeah. he did say he had he had brought it to the booster yeah. group, and no one said anything. So right. I didn't know if that counted as we're done. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So um, we are. Um, I don't believe we are ready to discuss the community use of school facilities. It was not included in the packet, and I believe that there was going to be more work done before bringing it to the board? Hmm. It's in here. Okay, not in mine, but that's okay. Um, so. No, yeah, we just, we discussed we it. We discussed and it so extensively. It's, it's, yeah. But my understanding was there was going to be some wordsmithing. Um, we were going to adopt the um, MSMA policy yes. and then use the former policy as um, the regulations right. because it was very uh, detailed and specific and also came out of, um, from our understanding of an extensive community, uh, school board, town council kind of committee about the use of, of um, all town facilities. So we didn't want to lose that sort of history and the intent behind those. But we also needed a policy that was um, really geared to just school facilities and um, really it just kind of adhered to yeah. law and what we had personally. I think we, we said we were bringing this forward for okay. the first reason. I just, so, yeah. yeah. Since okay. it wasn't in my pocket, yeah. I was like, okay, maybe that's why it's not. <laughs> <laughs> there was going to be a little wordsmithing in the um, MSMA sample to make it a little more specific to Cape Elizabeth. And then um, integrated pest management. There's really not a lot to say about that. We have to have a plan for pest management and um, Perry Swartz is our, um, there's, he has to be the coordinator for all of that and he follows those regulations and he is the, the key person. And um, field trips, we had a really long discussion about um, and one thing that came out of that um, was a discussion about possibly separating the policy about field trips from a discussion about transportation because there's a lot about field trips and, and how you get permission and all that business. But then there's this whole big section about 
who travels on a bus, when you can, and all this business. And it's very, and it doesn't even completely apply to field trips, so we're still working on that aspect. Okay, thank you, Ruby. Moving on to item nine, we may I have a motion, please. I move we approve the following policies for second reading. JJBD, athletic policy on sanctioning of sports, EBCC on bomb threats, BCC on nepotism, BBA, school board powers and responsibilities, and what is that, JJIAB, yep. private schools access to public school co-curricular, interscholastic and extracurricular activities. Second. Any discussion? The policy committee didn't receive any comment from the board on any of those, so okay. we just left them as is from first reading. Great, thanks. Okay. All those in favor? <laughs> okay. Moving on to um, committee reports. Uh, Hope Straw is our new um, policy chair. Um, she's not here, and Elizabeth, you've probably brought us up to date since um, we haven't had, we've had one policy meeting probably since. And she did a great job. And she did she a great did job. job. PAS, I don't, um, I haven't been to any PAS meetings yet. The, the one that was scheduled to be at has been rescheduled, right. so I have nothing to report there. Needs Assessment Committee, um, uh, would you like to talk about it, Heather, do you mind, or? Sure, except I wasn't there at the meeting today, We're, so maybe. Oh, oh, just about the, I'll talk about it, sure. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't there for the. Um, well, tomorrow is our last of four meetings. It is at 6.30 at the high school library, and um, we're going to um, look at, uh, we're gonna basically look at slides of, of comparable uh, school districts to compare and contrast with ours. Um, we're going to hear, um, we've received a proposal from Kobe and Company. We're going to receive a, um, a review of their proposal from them. And then there will be committee discussion, uh, in, uh, time for input from the public. And then ultimately at the end of our meeting, we will, um, as a committee, uh, it's a very large committee, um, we'll decide to vote whether or not to recommend a needs assessment to the school board. So after tomorrow night, there'll be a vote, and um, from there we'll, it will probably go to the February um, mm -hmm. board meeting when we when we will be asked to decide. Okay. Yep. Can I just clarify um, what you said for the public that um, the charge of this committee is not to decide what needs to be done, not to make decisions about projects or anything like that, but to decide if this committee is warranting the need to go further with the architect and the engineering firm to have a study done. And that's, that's the only charge that we are, not to make any choices or decisions about what's done, not to move forward into that whole process, but to decide if we want that assessment to be created. So, and I also would like to say that I think it's been a fabulous process. I think it's been very well attended and um, I encourage anybody from the public to come tomorrow night and, um, and speak your voice if you have something to say about it. Because um, there has been a lot of great discussion, I think. Yeah, there has been, and furthermore, we um, we have the minutes, if they're not all online yet, all the minutes are online. We're working on putting the videos of the tours, um, maybe half have been put up online. Um, so information's out there to the public, even if you didn't make the meetings. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, tech committee, Elizabeth, any news for us? There haven't been any meetings. Okay, awesome. Um, any requests for future school board meeting items? No. Okay. <laughs> any upcoming meetings besides the meeting uh, mentioned already tomorrow night for the needs assessment committee? And do we have a policy committee meeting set? Do you know? No. I'm okay. sure we'll have another one before the next business meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. At this point, may I have a motion, please? For, uh, item number 13. 
Oh, I move we enter into executive session pursuant to one MSRA subsection 4056A for the purpose of discussing a personnel item. We have a second? A second. Any discussion? Um, just for the public's uh, awareness at this point, um, if we move to move into executive session, we will uh, temporarily take, go off air, go into a private room, um, and then come back. If there's any need for a, a vote, we will take it in public. And then after that, uh, we will adjourn. So we may or may not see you afterwards. <laughs> you all can go home. Oh wait, all those in favor of moving into executive session? Okay, thank you. All right. I'm gonna fly to the back here. Okay.
Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. okay. So thank you everybody for that executive session. There was no, um, there's no follow up to it. There's no need for any kind of um, action. So that moves on to item 15. May I have a motion please? I move we adjourn. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> I did.